So thank you for uh, downloading or um, watching or listening to this recording um, on uh, a presentation using link survey uh, and administrative and geospatial data uh, to measure both the exposure to and the impacts of the 2019-2020 uh, Australian bushfires, uh, which came to be known as the, the Black Summer Fires. So the President of the Australian Academy of Science in, in January uh, labelled uh, the scale of these bushfires as unprecedented uh, anywhere in the world. Um, so according to satellite imagery after the, after the fires, uh, it was estimated uh, that about 30 million hectares of um, was burned over the over the period. Uh, about 20% of Australia's eucalyptus uh, uh, forest coverage, which is about seven and a half times higher than the annual average percentage burned over the last 18 years. Uh, and those last 18 years were a period of uh, quite high um, uh, bushfire um, incidents. Uh, so from a social research or a data analytics perspective, uh, there's a number of questions um, which need answering uh, and which we've been trying to answer. So who is exposed to the bushfires? And it's, uh, in some ways, it's, it's uh, relatively straightforward to measure, but uh, as I'll go on to show, different measures give you different results. What was the effect of the bushfires on, on individual well-being? How did attitudes um, towards key issues change? Um, was there an effect of individual exposure uh, as opposed to just national level change? And what's the relationship to COVID-19? And the link here gives the, um, the initial findings uh, from cross-sectional data in January. Uh, and what I'll present today is uh, some longitudinal data, uh, which follows the sample through to, to August. So how do we measure uh, bushfire exposure? Uh, so we asked eight questions um, in January 2020 on a survey of uh, about 3,250 um, respondents uh, nationally um, represented, or at least dis distributed uh, nationally from a probability-based sample, the Life in Australia survey. Uh, so we asked um, whether they'd experienced any of these uh, measures over the last um, or since since the start of spring, uh, and um, quite a range of, of uh, responses to the different exposure questions. Um, so uh, only one percent of the Australian population, uh, still about two hundred fifty thousand people, uh, reported um, that they had had direct uh, property damage, um, but uh, ten percent uh, reported that their um, uh, property had been threatened. Uh, and then even more reported that their friends or family had damage or, or property threatened. What was interesting uh, is compared to previous years uh, is about 9% of the Australian population need, needed to be evacuated over the period. Uh, about one fifth had their travel or their holiday plans changed and more than half of the population reported that they had, um, had been negatively affected by smoke from the fires. Uh, what was different about uh, the, this summer is that large amounts of smoke uh, affected uh, all of Australia's large uh, east coast um, uh, capital cities. So Brisbane uh, earlier in the season, Sydney and Melbourne, Australia's three largest cities, as well as Canberra where I live, uh, Adelaide um, in the south, were all exposed to a certain degree to smoke and that's uh, borne out in our data. Uh, and over half of the population reported some form of anxiety or worry uh, due to the fires. Um, we also have another exposure measure, and this is what I wanted to focus a little bit on the presentation, uh, which is whether you, whether the, pers whether the person lived uh, in a, a bushfire affected area uh, as recorded by the, um, uh, the Australian government uh, in terms of uh, relief payments. Uh, and about 14% of the uh, total Australian population uh, lived in one of the bushfire affected areas. But what we can see is that there's a number of people who lived in bushfire affected areas who um, were not, uh, um, did not report some of these exposures. Uh, and then a number of people who didn't live in those areas who did report those exposures. Um, so uh, as an, from one extreme you have um, 
about 30% of those who lived in a bushfire area uh, reported their property was directly threatened compared to only 7% for those who didn't live in a bushfire area, quite a big gap. Uh, but then when you look at the effects of smoke, uh, there's very little difference um, between those who lived in bushfire affected areas uh, and those who didn't. So we have multiple exposure measures, direct and indirect exposure. Uh, and indirect exposure we take as you had friend and family um, had their property damaged, your friend or family were threatened, you had travel holiday plans affected, your smoke uh, affected by smoke, you're anxious or worried. And direct effects, uh, subjective direct effects or self-report directed effects is whether you had, you were evacuated, your um, property was damaged or your property was threatened. And then we have the location-based measure. So the first question is, how do those different measures correlate with changes in, in well-being? Uh, so this gives uh, the um, longitudinally following a longitudinal sample of those who of, of a life satisfaction measure um, on a scale of zero to 10, uh, 10 being more satisfied, uh, zero being less satisfied. Uh, and um, for those who reported so self-reported direct exposure. So they were threatened, they had damage, or they had to be evacuated. And what we can see is that there's very, very little difference over the period in life satisfaction uh, by whether you are direct or indirectly exposed. Now that doesn't mean that, that the fires didn't have an effect on uh, life satisfaction in Australia. You can see a drop between October 2019 and January 2020 for all of Australia. Uh, but it wasn't any different for those who were directly affected and those who weren't. And then during the COVID period, which in Australia had its highest rates of infection in um, March and, and early April, and then again in um, late August, uh, the, um, there was no difference uh, between uh, in well-being uh, based on direct and indirect, uh, sorry, between those who were directly exposed and those who, who weren't. Uh, quite a different story now when we look at indirect exposure uh, uh, or secondary exposure. That's essentially those who reported family and friends or smoke or, or travel and holiday plans had to be changed. And what we find then is some convergence uh, between those who um, in January uh, reported no secondary exposure compared to in January those who reported secondary exposure uh, between from the, the pre um, uh, life satisfaction measure in October, um, continued conversion, uh, convergence into April, uh, but then what we find is a divergence in life satisfaction uh, between April and May. Uh, so over the COVID period, those who reported indirect or secondary exposure to the bushfire period had a greater worsening uh, in uh, well-being um, than those who didn't. And that's, that's borne out in other natural disaster data, uh, which shows um, a lagged effect of exposure to natural disasters on um, subjective measures with, and, and less uh, immediate effect um, from those, uh, from some forms of, of exposure to, to natural disasters. Uh, and then finally, when we look at our geographic measure, uh, we find a very different pattern over the, compared to the other two uh, exposure measures. Um, so no real difference leading into the bushfire period between October and January, or at the start of the COVID period. Uh, but then uh, as uh, infections um, uh, began to, to ease or, or had eased in Australia, uh, those who lived in a bushfire affected area uh, had higher levels of life satisfaction uh, than those in um, who didn't live in a bushfire affected areas. And that's largely explained by the fact that COVID in Australia, at least, has been an urban, um, uh, urban pandemic and the economic and the infect economic effects and the infections have tended to be concentrated uh, in urban areas. Uh, so essentially what we find is a quite complicated story uh, in terms of the effect on wellbeing of both the uh, bushfires itself as well as into the COVID period, depending on which exposure measure we use.
So what about attitudes to climate change uh, or, or environmental issues in general? I mean, one of the defining features of the, um, the bushfires was uh, the attention given to the role that climate change and the effects of climate change on drought and drying had on uh, the incidence of, of fires in Australia. The government at the time uh, was, um, there's quite significant differences between the government and the opposition uh, in the extent to which they are willing to, to push for um, pro-environmental policies. Uh, and what we saw was a significant uh, backlash against the conservative government uh, uh, due to the perceived effects and, and the, the quite um, scientifically valid effects of uh, climate change and other environmental issues on uh, fires in Australia. So what we found uh, when we compared our data in January 2020 to the last time we ran a similar survey in September 20, 2008, so it's not longitudinal, but it is repeated cross-section of the same questions, uh, is a significant increase in the proportion of people who reported a range of environmental issues were, seri were very serious. Uh, and uh, we didn't ask about bushfires or tropical cyclones in the previous uh, wave um, in 2008, but the other measures uh, all had either steady or, or an increase in um, views on them than being very serious. Between January 2020 and August 2020, which now is on a longitudinal sample, so it's not uh, to do with biases in our sample, um, the sample is the same, uh, reductions in the proportion of the population who think these environmental issues uh, are very serious and particularly large uh, reductions in those uh, who said drought and drying or bushfires uh, were very serious issues. So essentially what we found is, is leaving aside direct exposure for Australia as a whole, or sorry, for, for the exposure measures, uh, for Australia as a whole, an increase in views uh, concern towards the environment leading into the bushfire period and then declines leading into the, the COVID period. Uh, and how does that um, change based on our uh, different exposure measures? Well, um, cross-sectionally in January, uh, those who lived in bushfire affected areas and those who reported direct exposure were less concerned about the environment than those who, who didn't live in those areas or didn't report direct exposure, uh, which is somewhat counterintuitive. Uh, and it holds even when we control for a range of observable characteristics. Now we don't unfortunately have longitudinal data, so don't know whether there's shifts, uh, but at the very least, um, there's no evidence that uh, direct exposure uh, or living in a bushfire affected area uh, is associated with higher concern for the environment. Those who reported indirect exposure, however, uh, and in particular those who reported um, the um, effects on family and friends or, or, expect, or exposure to smoke, uh, were more concerned about the environment in January. Uh, and we found also that now longitudinally, controlling for January attitudes, those with indirect exposure became more concerned about the environment um, than those in uh, um, who didn't report that, that indirect exposure. There was no relationship with the other exposure measures. And while it's a bit out of scope of this paper, uh, what we also found is that those who were exposed to economic shocks during the COVID period, and particularly those who had housing shocks, uh, reported an increase, sorry, a decrease in their concern for the environment uh, over the period. Um, so essentially what we found, uh, just to uh, kind of summarise the, the environmental measures, uh, is nationally a, uh, a lessening in concern for the environment uh, between um, January and August, uh, from the height of the bushfire period through to the, um, the middle of the COVID period, uh, with that with a smaller lessening uh, um, for those who reported indirect exposure, but no difference for those uh, who reported the other exposure measures. Uh, 